Welcome to our service this morning, coming from the Church of St Michael and All Angels in Sopley. We stand just above the River Avon, and you may be able to hear the water pouring down the river from all the rain that we've had in recent days. We're back into green for ordinary time. This is for a short period before Lent starts with Ash Wednesday on the 17th of February. We're not going to be able to have our normal Ash Wednesday service that day, so I've produced an Ash Wednesday in a bag for you with some liturgy, some ash and a candle. And you could join in with that and we're going to have a Zoom service using that at 10 o'clock on Ash Wednesday. If you want to join in with either of those, please get in touch and I'll make sure you have the right things. Let's go inside and worship together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed. Through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And a collect for today, the second Sunday before Lent. Almighty God, you have created the heavens and the earth and made us in your own image. Teach us to discern your hand in all your works and your likeness in all your children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns supreme over all things, now and forever. Amen. We're now going to have our first two readings. Does not wisdom call out? 
does not understanding raise her voice. The Lord brought me forth as the first of his works, before his deeds of old. I was formed long ago, at the very beginning when the world came to be. When there were no watery depths, I was given birth. When there were no springs overflowing with water, before the mountains were settled in place, before the hills, I was given birth. Before he made the world or its fields or any of the dust of the earth, I was there when he set the heavens in place, when he marked out the horizon on the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above and fixed securely the fountains of the deep, when he gave the sea its boundary so that the waters would not overstep his command, and when he marked out the foundations of the earth. Then I was constantly at his side. I was filled with a delight day after day, rejoicing always in his presence, rejoicing in his whole world and delighting in the human race. This is the world of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The reading is from Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 to 20. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions, or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. This is the word of the Lord. And the Gospel. Alleluia, Alleluia. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. It's a prologue to John's Gospel. John chapter 1, the first 14 verses. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God." 
And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Churchwise, we're now in a little bit of ordinary time before Lent is upon us again. Ash Wednesday being on the 17th of February. And for that special day, I've prepared some Ash Wednesday in a bag materials. Well, an envelope, really. There are some prayers and readings, a little bag of ash, like so, for you to ash yourself, and a candle. We aren't meeting together physically on that day, but we can still be together in spirit as we share together in an Ash Wednesday liturgy. There will also be a service using these materials at 10 a.m. On, on Ash Wednesday using Zoom. Please do ask if you need a pack or if you need a link for that service. Anyway, we may be in ordinary time, but today's readings are a long way from being ordinary. In Proverbs, we have the description of wisdom, always female in the ancient world. And if you're female yourself, before you feel smug, remember this was mainly because wisdom literature was aimed at teaching young men. And it was thought that they may pay, might pay better attention if it talked about women. So there you go. And we hear of wisdom coming from the beginnings of the universe. It's powerful stuff. Our gospel is that well-known prologue or opening to John's gospel. Magnificent words which tell of how Christ was right at the very beginning of creation and how this revelation was unfolded to the world through the witness of John the Baptist. It tells of how we become children of God through Christ. It's a stirring passage from which much can be drawn. Then there's the epistle reading from Colossians. Easy to pass over perhaps, but it tells us much too. So I thought it might be good to have a look at that. At the very beginning of Colossians, Paul begins with a typical greeting, identifying first the author and then the community to whom the letter is addressed, to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ in Colossae. He describes those who receive this letter as being first and foremost in Christ. This is their identity. Again, this is powerful stuff. How often do we view our identity as being in Christ? Probably not very often. Paul is telling the Colossians and us that what matters beyond family, race, ethnicity, class and nationality is being in Christ. But we were always in Christ somewhere and as part of something, of course. Paul is helping us to see what it means to live out our Christian identity where we are. In this case, these people are in Colossae. There are two things to consider when we talk about Colossae. The first is that this is a church that meets in the home of Philemon, Aphia and Archippus, from which the slave Onesimus has run away. We know that from other bits of the New Testament. And mentioning slavery reminds us that we're talking about the Roman Empire, and this is particularly important in Colossians. Here, Paul is telling us some pretty dangerous stuff. We have to read this magnificent poem about Jesus in the context of the Roman imperial imagination. In a world in which images of Caesar were everywhere, Paul writes of Jesus as the image of the invisible God. Now, in a world where the emperor is nothing, nothing less than a son of God by virtue of his lineage, Paul says that Christ is the firstborn of all creation. In a culture in which the emperor's power was absolute, 
Paul tells us that all things in heaven and on earth were created through him and for him. But there's more. All thrones, dominions, rulers and powers are subject to his rule. Actually, not a very easy thing to say in a world such as Paul's. And Rome saw itself as a force of good and order against the barbarian chaos that lies at the edges of the empire. That was our forebears too. To that Paul says that Christ is before all things and in him all things hold together. I think we often skim over a reading like this and we miss what is going on. This is revolutionary and explosive stuff because if Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, then Caesar isn't. If Jesus is Lord, then the throne of Caesar, the dominion of the emperor, the rulers that keep the whole thing in place and the very power with which they do so, all become subject to the beloved son, to whom this little church community in Colossae have pledged their allegiance. But even after all that, Paul isn't finished yet. In an empire that views Rome as the head of everything, Paul tells this little community that Christ is the head of the body, the church. Christ, not Rome, not the emperor, is the head, the ruler of the body. But the body isn't the empire, it's the church. I can imagine them hearing this read, open mouth, trying to work out what it all means. And it all happens on a cross, not in a palace. Now the Romans were proud that they had kept the peace, the Pax Romana they used to call it, but we know how Rome maintained the peace, don't we? On crosses littering the landscape, the peace was established and secured by the total eradication of all opposition. It was very dangerous to stand against Rome and her great power. Paul turns all of this upside down by saying that Jesus reconciles to himself all things by making peace through the blood of the cross. So that is what sovereignty and power looks like, the blood of the Lord. Paul is telling this little group of basically nobodies that it was they who mattered. They mattered more than the Roman army or the emperor even, that they were followers of the real king, Jesus. It's a big vision, a very big vision. How do we see ourselves? A small band of people who don't count for much or what? Perhaps we need to look afresh and see that Jesus is the one really in charge and it is he that we serve. And the world out there may seem a dark and a dangerous and a meaningless place sometimes, but we are assured that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. It may be difficult to see God's purposes as much more than a tiny flickering candle in the dark, but the incarnation of the word means that at least we have seen them in our own shape. In Christ incarnate, we are given a glimpse of God's purposes in human form. The word became flesh and lived among us and we have seen his glory. And that is enough. The Creed. We believe in God the Father, God Almighty, by whose plan earth and heaven sprang to being, all created things began. We believe in Christ the Saviour, Son of God in human frame. Virgin born, the child of Mary, upon whom the Spirit came. Christ, who on the cross forsaken, like a lamb to slaughter led, suffered under Pontius Pilate. 
he descended to the dead. We believe in Jesus risen, heaven's king to rule and reign, to the Father's side ascended, till as judge he comes again. We believe in God the Spirit, in one church below, above, saints of God in one communion, one in holiness and love. So by faith our sins forgiven, Christ our Saviour, Lord and Friend, we shall rise with him in glory to the life that knows no end. So let us turn to prayer. May we pray in the power of the Spirit. Do use the pauses to make the prayers your own. And after Lord in your mercy, please join in with Hear Our Prayer. Lord God, your majesty is far beyond our human comprehension. You are amazing. But we bring our needs and our concerns to you, like children before a loving father. Let's just take a moment to open our hearts to the God who is within us. He is always with us. With the church that he holds so dear in every single minute he is with us lord in your mercy hear our prayer God of hope, help us to change how we live on this wonderful but fragile planet. Let us make our leaders aware that we really do care about the waste and the pollution. That we are ready to protect our forests and animals. that the waters of the earth are precious to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of grace, Give us compassion for one another, especially as we are driven apart by politics and the pandemic. May each of us, as we are able, reach out to the disadvantaged. The neighbour who needs help. The homeless guy huddled in a doorway. Refugees. 
desperate to escape poverty or even violence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, even as you restored health to the fevered and the possessed, send your healing to all in our community who are in special need today. Let each of us remember a name or a few names and pray for them during this week. Someone we know, or perhaps someone we've never even met. Nobody will be missed out. All are lifted to our Heavenly Father. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we thank you for the lives of those who we miss here on earth. Give your peace to all those who have lost family or friends. And today we especially remember Len Britton, Ellen Greg and Peter Pierce. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, keep each one of us safe and bless us as we try, like St. Paul, to do your holy work through this coming week. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's offer Christ's peace to those around us this day. Or for on our own, let's offer his peace to those we love, to our families, our friends, fellow church members, whoever it may be. a prayer at the preparation of the table. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you. Fruit to the vine and work of human hands. Become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice we offer for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. The Lord be with you. 
lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who in the same night he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world. Rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom. All who share this one bread and one cup. So that we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St Michael, St Luke and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us then pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, 
for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body of Christ given for all of us. The blood of Christ given for all of us. And today's post communion prayer. God, our Creator, by your gift. The tree of life was set at the heart of the earthly paradise and the bread of life at the heart of your church. May we who have been nourished at your table on earth be transformed by the glory of the Saviour's cross and enjoy the delights of eternity through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, We thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The Lord be with you. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.